Faith is not about everything turning out okay. Faith is about being okay no matter how things turn out. This is the Wisdom Worth Knowing podcast. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. If it's your first time joining me, welcome. Thank you for giving me a shot. You can subscribe to the podcast on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Wisdom Worth Knowing is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands of audiobooks completely free for 30 days. Sign up right now at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. That is a limited time offer for my listeners at a-u-d-i-b-l-e dot wisdomworthknowing.org. Faith is not about everything turning out okay. Faith is about being okay no matter how things turn out. This ought to be an interesting video for today because faith is actually one of the biggest struggles I have. Um, I've always had issues with faith. It comes a lot more naturally to my wife than it does to me. Faith is the act of believing without seeing in a lot of ways. And I'm one of those people who are incredibly rational. I need to understand things. They need to make sense to me all the time. Which, as you can imagine, is pretty self-sabotaging when we have a limited mind with limited capacity. <laughs> so this boomerangs on me quite often. So this idea that I, I will be okay no matter what happens, no matter how things turn out, incredibly foreign to me. So hopefully I have something of value to add on this video because I, I definitely agree with the definition. I definitely agree that it's not about everything turning out okay. It's not. Faith is something that we accept as without reason, without our ability of knowing what's going to happen next. Like I said, it's it's very, very difficult for me to wrestle. I wrestle with it all the time on, on very little things, too. Because this, this idea that we're okay, no matter how things turn out, is, well, well, I can think of a million different ways in which I things don't turn out well. So I can be what's called in a Oswald Chambers referred to as an amateur providence, and I can attempt to predict the future. And I can foresee ever, or maybe maybe a more culturally relevant example of this would be Dr. Strange. I can try to project into the future every possible scenario, the million different outcomes that can possibly happen. Ironically, when I do this kind of projection, it tends to be 99% bad and maybe 1% is the good. And the sad irony in my projections generally is that the one out of the hundred is the most likely scenario, the good outcome. But I am in a constant state of anxiety and panic over things not playing out the way they should or, or the way they probably will, which means everything will be okay. Since I reluctantly accept that reality, I rather would project every possible negative outcome so that I am emotionally and physically prepared for the, the worst case scenarios, all 100 of them. This isn't how we were meant to leave, live, by the way. If you're not a Christian, you may find value in this quote from Christ. He said, "Tomorrow has an, today has enough worries of its own. Let tomorrow worry about itself. I believe what he was trying to say in that statement was, listen, man, just focus on what's going on right now. You have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. But you know what? When tomorrow starts, you can focus on tomorrow tomorrow. If only this quote could really, really plant its seeds deep in me so that I could truly, truly accept it, that would be amazing. My life would be infinitely better. <laughs> Alas, I have one of those minds that attempts to project into the future countless negative scenarios. And if you're like me and you have a general anxiety about life and situations and you're in constant state of panic and preparation... All we can really do is try to get better at this, because if there's one thing that is true in my life, it's that I am better at this faith thing than I was 10 years ago. 
And if we take small steps in the right direction, I do think we do get better at things. I don't think in this lifetime I will ever master this. It will be a miracle if I, if I do. So pay attention. If you follow this show, if I suddenly have this deep, deep sense of faith, know that that was a miracle. <laughs> it was nothing I did. Because I do, I do think there's two points of contrast that we, we assume people of faith have. We assume that when you see somebody who's a person of faith, who seems calm all the time, we assume that they just don't have those fears and anxieties. And that's not true. They do have them. They just don't rely so wholly on themselves and their abilities to get through them. They have faith in society. They have faith in their ability. They have faith in God. They have faith in They have faith that things are going to be okay in spite of whatever they're dealing with in that moment. I think I struggle the most on this with issues of health. So let me give you an example. My son was sick this week. And when they start to run fevers and cough, my projection always goes to the, the absolute extreme negative on health issues. Not quite sure why. I'm sure it stems from a lot of my generalized fear of getting sick myself. You know, I could probably theorize on that for, for days. But the perfect example is I, I don't think that they're going to be okay, right? And so then I spend an immense amount of time researching the symptoms and possible treatments and things I can do to prevent potential catastrophes and the real scary part is when I start looking for symptoms for something to be worse. You know, my heightened awareness and now my heightened adrenaline anxiety from from worrying about it now has me so laser focused in on what they're doing that I assume that everything that they're doing is a life or death thing. Every cough, every sneeze, every... <laughs> oh, it's so ridiculous. And, and then what happens is, is I convince myself that everything is not going to be okay. When in reality, 99.9999% of the time, I mean, that, that may not be true, but in, in nearly virtually all circumstances, most people, they just get sick and they recover. For me to get to the point of seeing something, Taking that fear and anxiety and saying, okay, you know what? If that, if and when that happens, I will cross that bridge when I get there. I try to manufacture a whole bunch of new things to worry about. And, and this is, I'm sure I'm not alone in that. I know I'm not alone in this. Anxiety is a very common issue amongst us. But um, one thing, there's a couple things that have helped me with this in, in moving in the right direction with this faith thing. Prayer. Has helped. Positive reassurance. If, if you're not a religious person, you can at least reinforce yourself positively. Reassure yourself. Another good one is to just remind yourself that, hey, you're not the only person on the planet who deals with this stuff. No matter what happens, you're not going to be alone. You're going to have friends, family, loved ones. You're going to have hospitals you're going to have doctors you're going to have surgeons you're part of a society that is kind of equipped to deal with worst case scenario in fact there's many many people who spend an immense amount of time and study in becoming proficient in dealing with worst case scenario i think a lot of my insecurity stems from my my self-sufficiency. I feel like that no matter what problem comes my way, I need to handle it on my own, which is just not true. And until I kind of abandon that self-sufficiency, which is a flaw, I mean, it, it, it is a, it's an asset in some ways, but on issues bigger than me, it's a flaw. Like there's, there's no value in making myself sufficient on things that are just bigger than my ability to control. Like, for example... I can't suddenly go to school, get a doctorate, and learn how to become a surgeon if my child gets appendicitis. 
I'm going to have to rely on other people for that. <laughs> I'm not, you know, it's like, it's amazing how we can assume that, or in my case, I can assume that every problem that comes my way is something I'm going to have to personally deal with on my own. This, this uh, stubborn, prideful independence is not the way we were meant to believe to be, not the way we were meant to live. Now I'm going to go into that a little bit further, but first, Wisdom Worth Knowing is brought to you by Amazon Audible. If you're like me and you love reading but don't have the time, then Audible audiobooks may be the perfect solution for you. With Audible, listening is the new reading. You can pop in your earbuds and discover that next exciting adventure or expand your knowledge from any PC, Mac, Android, Alexa, or Apple device. And check this out. Because you listen to this show, for a limited time, you get instant access to thousands of audiobooks from Audible's Premium Plus catalog completely free. Just visit audible.wisdomworthknowing.org right now and take advantage of a free 30-day trial. That's right, for 30 days, you'll get full access to Audible's Premium Plus catalog, as well as an additional free title of your choosing. If you discover audiobooks aren't for you, no problem. You can cancel instantly online. That's it. It's that simple. Two years ago, audiobooks began to change my life, and they may change yours too. Pause this podcast and head over to Audible. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org and sign up right now for this limited time offer for my listeners. So if we don't learn to temper this part of ourselves, this uh, anxiety part of ourselves, or this lack of faith, and this inability to rely on others and to realize we are not the only ones who are going to have to deal with whatever issue crosses our path, and maybe this self-sufficiency thing is also part of just being in a generally detached culture, you know, because we spend a lot of time behind devices now and not in close interpersonal relationships. You know, the anxiety thing may be part of isolation. You know, we, t- we tend to have more of an isolationist approach to all of our friendships and relationships now. And so we worry that we will be putting others out and that we don't have deep enough connections with others that we can rely on them if we need them. You know, reaching out to a friend or a family or a loved one when we're, when we're fearful is, is extremely beneficial, especially if they are a person of faith who in which faith comes naturally. We all have those friends. The worst thing I can do is call somebody who's an, in, who has equally less faith than I do. <laughs> we all know how those conversations go. Like, well, what if they... What if their temperature keeps going up? Yeah. What if their temperature keeps going up? And what if it gets really bad? What if this happens? Oh, I didn't even think about that. What if this happens? Oh, my goodness. And then you just kind of feed each other's fear and anxiety and lack of faith. Not always the best decision. I'm immensely grateful for my wife who has a deeper faith. This whole this whole being okay no matter how things turn out thing is something that she is much better than I am at. And so when I am at points of extreme anxiety and I'm self-aware enough to realize it, I'll say, hey, can you listen to me be insane for a moment? (laughs) I need somebody just to hear me out and just reassure me. It's good to know people who have that deep faith and to have a relationship with them. You know, they're, they're incredibly useful to tap into when you're spiraling. I guess that's probably the best word for it. When you're fueling that anxiety-ridden feedback loop of adrenaline and fear and adrenaline and fear and more adrenaline and more fear and more adrenaline and more fear. You know, here's another amazing thing that I I think that's helped with my faith, and it's just life experience. Most of my deepest levels of anxiety, you know, back when I had panic attacks and stuff, was when I was young and I was just starting out life and I was just becoming independent. You know, and a lot of that stemmed just from my lack of confidence in my ability to find the right people to help me deal with issues and address them wholly. You know, and and as the years have kind of passed and I've survived my anxieties over and over again, and I start to realize how ridiculous my anxieties are in real time, in real life, and how much time and energy I waste on fear, that has helped That's helped me with my self-talk of saying, no, Craig, you're just overreacting. You did the same thing a week ago. You did it a month ago. And like I said, as as soon as, as yesterday, 
I had to tap into this experience. I had to look back and say, no, Craig, you've done this before. You've gotten yourself worked up and anxious for no reason whatsoever. There's no reason to worry about something until there's a reason to actually focus on something to worry about. Let's not manufacture, let's not make the problem worse. Because historically, that's what you've done. And so this whole, that that is faith, right? So like, I might not have a huge deep well of it, but I've got a, I've got a small, maybe three foot deep well, you know, like I don't have the, the depth, super deep, deep depth of faith yet. But hey, I've, I've dug up a little one. I've got a little well to draw upon. <laughs> and then I just think with some people, it just doesn't come as naturally. Like this is the way I'm wired and I'm trying not to be too self-deprecating here because there is value in projection. There's value in having the ability to predict outcomes. It makes you a better saver. It makes you a better preparer. It makes you better at a job that requires you to predict possible outcomes. So it is a gift in a lot of ways, you know, this being able to project into the future. And so there's, there is value in that, you know, and, in and, and so I don't want to really sell myself too short, but, but if this, this strength of mine is not focused on constructive things. In other words, if I take this ability to project and I use that gift to project to the negative, into the, into the possible hor horrific atrocities that this future, that this life can possibly bring, the better this gift is, the worse you can cripple yourself with anxiety on. And I am, in, I, and I do consider myself incredibly blessed that I that I have the ability to predict things. And I don't, and I'm not trying to talk myself up, but anticipate things. Any good planner has this ability. I'm grateful for that gift, but man, it betrays me. Man, it can boomerang on me, especially when this lack of faith thing really comes into the equation. Because fear and ang anxiety and stress and negative thoughts these are all stuff that everybody deals with on an everyday basis it's not just me you know and the the fact of the matter is is in most cases we'll find a way human beings we have a tremendous ability to adapt just look at the last two three thousand years at how the human race has adapted to seasons to hunger to pain to sickness have we perfected this no will we ever perfect it no we're part of a decaying and fallen world so naturally these things are going to come and go but we have a tremendous capacity to adapt i mean if you think back to things that actually people suffered under I find my lack of faith disturbing. You know, it's like just a hundred years ago, there was a one in 10 chance a baby may have, well, I, I don't, I don't want to say the exact statistic. I think it was pretty high. There was a high baby mortality rate. I don't want to say one in 10, but it was pretty high, which means you would lose a child at birth. There was also a high mortality rate for the mothers, which means you may lose your wife and mother. That wasn't that long ago. That was like 120, 150 years ago. But we found a way. Human beings found a way. They overcame. You know, there's certain characters in the, in, in the Bible, and then there's people like David Goggins who actually have found a really radical approach to life in which they walk into pain and suffering because they're like, you know what? Comfort doesn't make me strong. So they anticipate all these fearful outcomes, and then they're like, bring it. Whoa, could you imagine having that lifestyle? Bring it. Bring the hardships on. Bring on the suffering. I want to see what I'm capable of. Man, isn't that something to strive for? People like Paul in the Bible were big on that. They discovered this really, really rare personality trait in which not only did they not avoid suffering, in which we spend an immense amount of time and energy and resources trying to avoid suffering. Not only did they not avoid it, but they sought it out. They sought out pain and suffering. 
because to them, suffering was the cornerstone of strength. In other words, you you wanted to test the your limits of your own fear, of your own anxiety, of your strength. You wanted to be constantly tested. And falling into this trap of always wanting to be comfortable, they they see as a is a horrifically bad idea. And in a lot of ways, they're right. They are. You know, if if we're constantly seeking comfort and, and running away from discomfort, we are going to be afraid all the time. But as we endure, as we go through hardships, as we build that strength, I think we also build faith. We have more experience to draw on on overcoming hardships. I think a big part of the reason we all struggle with anxiety so much is because we have it so good. We're all just waiting for the bottom to fall out from under us. We're waiting for the chaos to just manifest itself with our amidst our order. To borrow from Jordan Peterson's phrasing. We don't want to lose it. And that's okay. We're grateful. That's a good thing. But we do need to also understand and accept the reality that some discomfort, if not all discomfort, is good for us. It builds character. It builds strength. It gives us faith and endurance. And that's arguably where we need to focus our minds. So I can say that to myself out loud right now because my son is doing better now. But when I'm in the thick of that anxiety, it's, man, it's it's hard to get out of that. It's hard to get out of that cycle of worrying and fear and projecting and losing faith and not having faith. It's incredibly frustrating when you're aware you don't have faith. That lack of faith is disturbing, to quote Star Wars. It is. It's really, really frustrating, you know, when you don't have it. And you're like, come on, man, just it's going to be fine. You know, it is frustrating. So I feel your pain. If you are a fellow worrier, you're not alone. I'm with you. But remember, we are going to be okay. Even if things do fall apart, we will find a way. We need to reassure ourselves. Whatever faces us. There is a plethora of history and people who have found a way to endure and overcome it. And it may not be what we want. But no matter what the outcome is, it will make us stronger. And we will find a way. Because, guess what? We don't have a choice. And that's okay. You know? We don't, we don't always get to pick what happens to us. In most cases, we don't. Things just happen to us. And we are incredibly blessed. We're incredibly lucky to be in a situation in which we worry about very little. And maybe, just maybe, I should step back every time I get one of these fits of anxiety and I should just be grateful. You know, maybe I really need to replace that with gratitude. It's like, if this is the worst thing I have to deal with, I should count myself incredibly blessed. If my temporary discomfort once a month or once every couple of months is something I have to deal with, well, maybe I should be grateful that my entire life isn't one of discomfort. What was that uh, I'm trying to think of? You know, some people's, some people's problems are real problems. They, they're really struggling with, with sickness. They're really struggling with, with starvation. You know, my parents used to say when I was growing up, hey, there's kids starving overseas. There's kids starving in other countries. Eat your food. It's like these things are really happening. And I'm not saying this to make ourselves feel guilty, but it's like perspective, right? I could use for a little more suffering. You know, it, it might be beneficial for me to become a little bit stronger because we don't know what the future holds. So, yeah, I think that's a, it's definitely a struggle for me. Faith is, uh, is, has always been a struggle for me. I, I, I do pray that I get better at it. I pray that I move toward acceptance of reality more often. 
And then I just shut off the projection. If I'm going to project, I need to focus it. If I'm going to turn on and off that gift, I need to learn to turn it off when it's not being used constructively. I need to stop and tell myself, I'm not going to use my my gift of projection to project into a billion possible scenarios that are just not probably going to happen. Probably not going to happen. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Today's worries are sufficient upon their own. So let's focus on today. So here's a great prayer on this, by the way. Then I use this, I do recite this prayer pretty often. It's actually, it's an old prayer. I picked it up from my grandfather. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. Faith is not about everything turning out okay. Faith is about being okay no matter how things turn out. You've been listening to the Wisdom Worth Knowing podcast. I've been your host, Craig Chamberlain. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Before you go, please like, share, and subscribe on Facebook, YouTube, or Rumble. That helps feed the algorithm so that the show can grow. Please like and, well, actually, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, and leave a review on whatever podcast network you may be listening on. That also feeds the algorithms and helps the show grow. Wisdom Worth Knowing is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands of audiobooks completely free for 30 days. Sign up right now for this limited time offer for my listeners at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. You can cancel any time without being charged a cent. Until next time, faith is not about everything turning out okay, but faith is about being okay no matter how things turn out. And let's work on being the best version of ourselves we can today, because as always, that's all we can do. Have a great day.